Jesus. Now let me let me take a break. I get excited about this stuff. <laughs> but uh, moving backwards. Have anybody been watching the news about this this uh, declaration that Donald Trump made? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do anybody know the significance of what ha had happened today? Do anybody? Okay, good. Nobody know. Or maybe you know you just want to keep quiet. But let me break it down to you. When Donald Trump said they were building, and when I was in Israel, I actually seen the plot in the land, and, my, and I had a one-on-one -on -one with this tour guide. And he said, you see this land? I said, yeah. He said, this is the embassy. The embassy. I said, for who? He said, United States of America. He said, tell your people you'll be the first one to see the land before America buy it. He said, but when America, America buy this land, there will be a third world war. I got so much to share with y'all. I'm just like bubbling. <laughs> and so, they're not so much concerned about the embassy. They are concerned with Donald Trump declared Jerusalem belongs to the Jews. Amen? I'm going to give you some scripture. We're going to break it down. Have anybody ever noticed when the Jews were real against the well and wall and they get the rocking like this? Yeah. Why, why are they doing that? What are they doing? Hmm. Going back to the tabernacle plan. Well, the day of atonement was a once a year sacrifice that they would take one goat and sacrifice for the whole congregation. And what they would do is, we'll have the priest will bring the goat in. And one thing about this goat or sheep, it got the trembling at the gate. And it's something when we get in the presence of the, the presence of God, we begin to get a, a little nervous. We get a little frigidity, right? Because you're about to get into his holiness. And some of you have not been there, but if you ever got there, you're real careful. Because something has to die before it gets into that presence. And that is why we don't feel the presence of God, because we never died to get there. No flesh would glory in his presence. So y'all fleshly thinking, fleshly moving folks would never move in a Shekinah glory. Not, not even talking about the Shekinah. Just say his glory. Because the Shekinah would kill you dead on the spot. We'll talk about that later too. So, a lot of us, we're, we're spirits, the, the presence of God, but not God in his fullness. Mm -hmm. And you won't get God fullness until you bring a holy sacrifice and a congregation come as one and worship him the same. When we get that, we will get a manifestation like y'all wouldn't believe. And that's why I'm glad I'm teaching this to you. Mm -hmm. Take my time just to talk. <laughs> so, when Donald Trump made that statement, the Jewish people got excited. Why? Not because of Donald J. Trump embassy. They got excited because they've been weeping and wailing for a temple to sacrifice. For 2,000 years after the Romans destroyed Israel around 33 AD, AD that, that, when that temple, oh my God. Anybody remember the passage when the temple was ripped from top to bottom? There's no way you can rip that temple. Jesus ripped that veil to show everybody he is the pathway to the Messiah. And Jesus is now our high priest and he rips his veil. But the significant thing about it was the veil was four inches thick and 60 foot high. What man can do it? Jesus did it himself. But anyway. So. Anybody ever seen this, dome, this golden dome, the dome of the rock? Mm -hmm. Anybody got that picture? I had a picture I was showing the brother. Brother Mike. Okay. Okay. Well, you probably can't see it, but you can probably get it later. Well, this right here is the dome of the rock. And when the Muslims conquered Israel around the seventh century, century, they built this dome. What's the significance to this dome? This is where Abraham sacrificed Isaac. So, what's the significance, Pastor? 
This was considered the most holiest place on the planet. And when the Muslim conquered Israel, the first thing they did was build a mosque on top of the most holiest place. Well, well, when I say pastor, well, I understand where it's, it's, it's Mount Moriah, you know, that's, that's a sacrificial place. That is why the Muslim believe that Israel belongs to them because of Ishmael. Mm -hmm. by, by birth, by, by being first born. But Isaac was a sacrifice of promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, pastor. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, just, I'm just talking. I'm preaching. I don't know if I want to preach. I don't want to preach. I think I want to talk. <laughs> okay. Everybody got it so far? But what is the most significant thing about this piece of land, the Dome of the Rock? Are you ready? You know why the Jewish people are excited? They're worshiping on one part of the wall, but their temple is tore down. That Dome of the Rock is what we call the Holy of Holies. When you walked into the gate and you had your the, the, uh, the brazen altar, the brazen labor, then you went into the holy place. Then after the holy place, you went into the uh, holy place, you went into the holy of holies, right? Anybody remember that place? Where they would put a, uh, a, a rope around them and if they dropped dead, they would pull them out. Why? Because they were in the very presence of God. Where is that temple built? Right on top of the Holy of Holies. And Jerusalem cannot build their third temple until that place is not Donald. But Donald J. Trump is not a president. He's an architect. Wow. <laughs> mm, my God. Oh, 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 my God. He was chosen for this very hour to fulfill biblical prophecy in the last days. And that is why he's able to build based on oh my God. When I went to the Temple Institute, I asked the lady, why are you going to love this minister Mo? I said, do you have the red helpers? They said, we have the red helpers. I seen the artifacts, the, the very breastplate that the priest will wear. I seen it with my very own eyes. Then they, I said, what about the priest? They have said we found the bloodline of the Levitical priesthood through bloodline, through DNA. So they said we have the priesthood in order. Wow. Mm. But there's a problem. I said, where's the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant is nowhere but in Vatican. When Peter was killed, his very tomb is in the Vatican and everything else lies in the Vatican. That's why Roman Catholic is the greatest religion in all the world and it's the mother of Holly. Everything now comes together. Let's, let's be cool. I know it's a lot to take. <laughs> slow down. Yeah, I'm slow down. Slow down. <laughs> if I, if I, I should have been taking some notes. <laughs> so y'all can, can kind of see how close we are. Now, what's the significance about this this temple? Well, oh, let's y'all want to go there? Yeah. yeah. Somebody said we need some. Well, I, I want to say it, then we're going to go into the word. Amen. Amen. What's the significance about this temple? We're going to go there. I'm just going to talk about it. We're going to go to the scriptures to solidify. Remember in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible said there was a war in the heaven. Michael against uh, Satan's angel and Satan against Michael. And the Bible said uh, Michael angel to prevail. And he said, woe unto the habitations on the earth what they have but a short time. What do they have? About three and a half years of tribulation. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24 says, the abomination of desolation. What I'm talking about, my brothers and sisters, mm. the only way the Antichrist can come, they have to have a third temple. Jesus. And I asked the lady, I said, how long would it take you? She said, it'll take us about six months with a good architect, with highway, uh, with uh, heavy machinery, we can build. I said, and they said, the only thing that's stopping us is a blueprint. We got the blueprint, but we don't got the building permit. Because mm -hmm. the land belongs to the... Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 
When Israel got their land back and Jerusalem became the capital of Israel again, now they're getting their title deed. What's the title deed? So somebody can go erect and build their third temple and the Antichrist now can come on the scene and rule and reign wars and rumors of war. What would he do? He would make global peace. Oh my. He would fix the financial crisis. He would fix the racial crisis. Uh, crisis. And, and brother Bell said, whatever man can fix this problem, be he man or be he God or be he devil, he will be worshipped as the one world leader and the one world dictator. Well, I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, someone has created chaos. Do y'all know all the chaos in the land? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they can create it, they can fix it, and they're creating it right now. All of the vision and all the wars is created by people in big places, and the plan is being fulfilled. Clap your hand. Yeah. 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 Uh, that is why, my brothers and sisters, that the church has now went lukewarm, watered down, and we have service that God don't even want to come in himself because they forgot that he was a holy God. And we're creating churches that we can like, but what about the church that God loves? Yeah. We got this church doing this, and we do all the entertainment. But God would not step foot in the place. That's why we have to entertain people to death because God ain't showing up. But I wish to God that God could come into a place where people can worship and praise with yeah. pure worship and pure praise and pure holiness. And God go to fall in the place and fill someone with his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let me get my breath class. Come on now. Y'all see where it's going? Yes, sir. I want y'all to understand what I'm telling you. I don't care how well the new age is creating church and making a hip-hop show, making it a rap show, making a hip-hop gospel, making all this. Ask yourself, is God really in it? God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. <laughs> well, let's go. We're going to talk about that glory stuff later. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, this is good to me. This is good to me. And the carnal folks say, you just made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you think. Let me tell you something about this tabernacle plan. You ready? Are you really ready? The same tabernacle plan that God gave Moses is the same replica that's in heaven right now. Jesus. Oh, my God. Uh, Sister Mary will get ahead of myself. I wish I could show them that the same plan that Moses made was the same plan that was in the heaven and the same thing that Moses laid out. That's what you're going to see when you get to heaven, when you see the 24 elders and the child of worshiping God. Oh, my God. What would you do when he's really that holy God of yesterday, today, and forever, the God of the old, the God of the new, and he changes not, and he sits on his throne, and he's still a holy God. And society told us he was cool. Mm. My, my, my. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm. Showed you a pretty picture. Straight your hair, smooth lips. Everybody pick on that type of Jesus. But what if he was truly a holy God? You, oh my God, a familiarity brings contentment. And y'all got so cool with this type of Jesus, and ain't nothing like him. Jesus. That is what the devil would do. He paints images. He shows you types of things that God is not, and you think everything is cool, but later you'll find out he's holy, truly who he say he is, and he will be the holy one of Israel in a holy place when you see him again. I can't change it. You can't change it. we got to receive it. And that's the way it is. Y'all can make them cool if you want to, but Jesus ain't cool. Jesus is holy. Yeah. My, my, my. Oh, boy. Next week, we're going to have a chart for y'all. Everybody good? Amen. Saints, I'm just trying to, trying to help you. My job as a pastor is to make sure you're prepared. How we live, 
how we think is so unlike God. But what if you would have seen the priest go up in that temple and they drug him out dead in the presence of God? Mm. You have a good reverence. If you remember Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied to a man of God and I dropped dead, you will have more reverence. Come on, but man. the problem is, y'all ain't never seen it, and y'all think this thing is a joke. But when God gets for real, everybody will have a reverence and a fear for Jesus, for who he says he is. Amen. Yeah. Yes, he's grateful and he's merciful, but he's holy as well. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Let's have a healthy balance. Oh, boy. <laughs> Those priests was careful how they presented themselves and dressed when they went in the temple. Why did I everybody look at oh boy? Yeah. Yeah. Look like they left a nightclub and they said I'm going to worship God. I ain't telling you put a three piece suit on, but I'm telling you, man, be presentable because God said, not only he's the God of your soul, but he's the God of your body. Yeah. I ain't think I get much out of that. <laughs> well, I just go to church and I look. That shows your attitude about it. That shows how you really care. I don't care. I'm going just like this. I don't care. I wear the same thing to a basketball game. I don't care. Because I don't know the holiness of God and the righteousness of God. And I don't know how to present myself yet. I just do what they do and hope that God receives it. I'm here to tell you, you better find out who he is and to find out what he's going to receive. Yeah. Some of the folks say, why don't I never get into the presence of God like that? Why don't I never feel his power like that? Because the way you think about him, the way you think about it, how you live toward him, and how you live is what you always give him. And what you give him, that's why you never get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll never get a power. I'll never feel that power. Because you don't know what he wants. You think he knows, oh boy. Don't y'all just, when y'all get excited, jump around, maybe God don't want that either. Y'all jumping around, y'all shouting with y'all hateful heart. God don't want that. God want a loving heart with some love. Oh my head, Lord, lift up holy hands. We are wrapped them down. He don't want that ugly praise. That's some garbage you put off the ground and hope that he take it. God ain't taking everything. Come on, man. Man. Come on. Come on. To make you feel good. Just because you feel good don't mean God loves it. Come on. Oh, my, my. Oh, my. As they all say, let me try and fill the temple. Yes. And the angel self and begin to cover their face and cover their feet and be green and cry through the heaven, holy, holy, holy. And he said, I'm a man where I'm circumcised. Look, when you get into the presence of God, you will see how dirty you really are and you'll see how much mercy you really need and you'll give a whole lot of mercy to somebody else. I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, all of us got spot, but you're going to see yourself when you get into the glory of God and he'll show you the truth. Oh, boy. Let's do it. I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to mess with you. When you begin to get in this type of presence of God, I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to mess with all of y'all. And don't even lie to me. Don't just be quiet. So I ain't going to give y'all a chance to lie. <laughs> you get in the presence of God, you say, Lord, what do you want me to get rid of? And as soon as he's about to say something, you change your mind. Oh, oh my. Mm -hmm. Stop. That's fine and all. But what if you see him on that day? And he said, you remember you told me to ask what to get rid of? He said, that's what I meant. And that's why we have a problem now. He said, deal with it now or we'll deal with it later. And you got to find out in the presence of God what he really wants so you can be prepared when you see him. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Mãe, mãe, mãe. Mãe, mãe, mãe. Nia toro, she did here con doro. I got time. I'm going to be teaching for the next, for the next two or three months. I'm going to be teaching. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But I'm just going to give you an introduction tonight. What if? What if? The God you say you serve in is not the holy one that was in that temple. I'm going to say it once. I'm going to say it again. God is not cool. God is not hip-hop. God is not jazzy. God is not fresh. God is holy. And God said, and see, and, and, and to, in order to see him, you must be holy for God. You, you can't get holy with all this stuff going off in your head, going off in your mind. So whatever man thinking in his heart so easy, you're the very thing you've been listening to. God ain't cool. God is holy. Come on. Yeah. All right, under the tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll just wake you clean on up out to sleep one. <laughs> it's really gonna wake y'all up when I go into the past of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. When you find out he is truly a holy God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And uh one more point I want to make as we get into the reading. The first thing you went was through the gate. The next thing you had was a altar. Repent, right? Then you had to praise the labor, be baptized. Then you went to the holy place and you shall receive the gift of a oh, salvation plan. Even back in the old tabernacle plan. But y'all gonna love this one. What was that brazen, that, that, that labor made of? Why was that labor so shiny? When the priest went before the labor, it was so shiny that he, he could see the spots before he go into the holy place. He had to look at the labor as he cleaned himself up and make sure no blood was not on him before he went into that holy place. That's why the, that's why the labor looked like a mirror. Where did the mirror come from? Mm. When the women left Egypt, they took the mirror which represented vanity and they sacrificed their vanity for the kingdom of the Lord. Mirror vanity. Mm -hmm. That's but that's why the priest could see themselves. They gave up their vanity so the priest could see them. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. What time is it? You got plenty of time. Oh, time is it? I, what time is it? Seven forty. All right, brother Roger. I love brother Roger. Uh -huh. But man, you're probably as young as you used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give y'all about an hour of this, right? Come on now. I'm gonna give you about an hour. Of and then we'll, we'll catch up, all right? So everybody understand why well, this thing about the, the, the our temple, everybody understand that, right? We got it? Okay, let's go into the book of um, Matthew 24. Somebody get Matthew 24, 32 and 35. I need somebody to get Isaiah 66 and 8. Isaiah 66 and 8. And I'll let somebody get Psalms 90 and 10. Okay, who has, uh, and I need, I'm sorry about that, Revelation 12. Revelation 12, and, uh, 7 through 10. Who got Revelation? Brother Rogers, read Revelation 7, 12, and 10. It says, Revelation 7, 12 through 7. 12 through 10? 12 through 7. Let's go. Sorry about that. Yeah. Seven, 7 through 12. Okay. Revelation 12. 7, seven through 12. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about chapter 12, 7 through 12. I got it. Revelation 12. Go ahead. Verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. Yeah. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Yeah. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Yeah. That old serpent uh -huh. called the devil. Yeah. And Satan. Yeah. Which deceived the whole world. The whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. Yeah. Now watch this. Where's the devil at right now? <laughs> Be careful, you don't know. 
First Corinthians 4, 4 says he's the God of this world. world, which means the world system, which means the atmosphere, which means the program, the satellite, and the system, but not the earth. Y'all better get this. He said he's getting cast down to earth. Satan is not on earth. The only way Satan can get on earth, he needs to possess someone and get a body. That's the only way the devil can walk around because he be a human body. And some of you act like devil and he move up in you. And that's the only way the devil can stop me is to move the one of you. And the devil needs a body to operate on earth. So don't get it twisted. The devil can't just land on earth. He need a body. And some of y'all ain't nothing but a body that he can use. And he can, all the way he touch me, he got to move with you to touch me. Come on. Yeah. Other than that, he can just fly by me. But the Bible said, oh, well. <laughs> He's the God of Ero, the air, the prince of the air, but not the earth. But Brother Rodney say, the earth. What is he saying? He's coming to get his body. Yeah. Go ahead, read, please. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now it's come salvation, yes. the strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, yeah. which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, yeah. and by the word of their testimony. Uh -huh. And they loved not their lives until death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Whoa! Whoa, what? To the inhabitants of the earth. Whoa, unto the earth dwellers. Why? It's John, the revelator, saying, Whoa, whoa means bad. Come on, man. Like trouble is coming. Whoa, unto the habitation of the earth. Let's find out why. <laughs> of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you. Hold up. Woe to them because the devil has now come down unto you as the anti-Christ. Go ahead. Having great wrath because he knew that he had hey. but a short time. time. Great wrath. Oh boy. <laughs> Let me give you a breakdown. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little bit of time. That should be seven years of tribulation. First half year of tribulation, second half year, the uh, second part, great tribulation. Satan now is moving in a great tribulation, and the Bible says, Whoa, and in the habitations of the earth, and that's where folks will now be beheaded. Let me break something down to you so I can move on. Hmm. Why would the Muslims allow the Jews to build that temple? Hmm. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the Muslim believe the Mahadi. Who is the Mahadi? Their Messiah. And their Messiah will walk out the Jews and the Christians. Mm. And they believe Jesus Christ will be with the Mahadi. Mm -hmm. So that is why they will allow him to build that temple because the Mahadi comes down and bodies a body and goes into the temple. Y'all clap your hands into the Lord on that good stuff. Amen. Go, go ahead. That's it, Pastor. All right. Now, now, now everybody got that, right? Yeah. Matthews 25, 24, 32, and 35. Matthew 25, 24, 24, 32. Oh, it's good. You ready? Up to 24, 32, and 35. Read, please. Come on. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put a forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Yeah. See, likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not Stop. The fig tree represents the birth of Israel. Israel was a nation back in 1948. Amen? 
And he said, this generation shall not pass. Y'all want to know the age of the generation? If you don't have to go there. Psalms 90 and 10 say the generation is to a three, to two, three scores. Oh, wait, hold it. Uh, three scores and 10. Mm -hmm. That means 20, 20, 20, and 10. Mm -hmm. And he said, if they give a strength, mm -hmm. they can live 80. What he's saying is, 70 years is the lifespan of a man. 1948, do your mouth, is 2018. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, no. Come on, Pastor. Say it again, sister. Come on. Yeah. Y'all got it? Oh, my goodness. Let me bring something down to y'all. Why you think our generations that went crazy? <laughs> Why you think everybody don't lost their mind? Why you think men don't want to be men no more? Women don't want to be women no more. Why you think the world's in a state of confusion? This is the last generation. What generation comes after that? Mm. Mm. My, my, my. Okay. Cheers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaiah 68, 66 and 8. Who got that? 66 and 8. Who have heard of a thing? Who have seen of such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Hold up! How long did it take Israel to be born as a nation? And one day. In 1948, Israel became a nation in a day. And that's when the time clock began to tick. Amen? Amen. Okay. Keep on going. I'm about to, about to go into the tablet now. Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travail shall brought forth her children. Amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Well. I think I got like five more minutes. Ten. Ten more minutes. Let's talk about this tabernacle plan. Now everybody got the significance of what's going on today. And don't be fooled. They said in the book of Jeremiah, or Revelation, speaks on, oh, how Babylon has fallen. <laughs> a great nation will fall overnight. And the smoke will ascend to the heavens. Mm -hmm. Saints, I ain't telling you to live in fear because I'm not living in no fear. Come on now. But right now, Keep it real. America is in deep trouble. Yes, they are. Every nation right now that have missiles will release these bombs. And America has a satellite system, a Star Wars system, back in the day when Ronald Reagan brought it up called the Star Wars system. And it's supposed to knock nukes out the air. But I'm here to tell you, you can't knock too many nukes out at one time. Amen. It's time for us to get serious. It's time for us to know who God is. And it's time for us to quit playing games and take this thing seriously. Amen. All right. The tabernacle. You know what? I ain't gonna go into it tonight. Because uh, as we begin to talk about the tabernacle and, and the plan of the tabernacle, and, uh, a module up here so we can begin to look at. Amen. Amen. And I'm need somebody to get a module and, and break it down and break down the types. Because in the tabernacle plan, you're gonna find out. You got people that praise outside the courts. Uh huh. Out, out of court. Out praise. of court. Mm -hmm. They praise outside the court. Mm -hmm. But as you begin to go into the inner court. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody say the inner court. The inner court. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. No one can go into a holy place if they don't die and repent. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. The th first thing was that there was an altar. Mm -hmm. Had four horns, was symbolic as Jesus going to the four corners oh, of the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Four horns. And the horns represent strength. And what the priest would do, put blood on the horns of those altars. Amen? And the next thing you had was a brazen labor. What did that mean? Be baptized. The first thing they had to do was fully, be fully clean from head to toe. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, let me stop. Mm -hmm. mm. Somebody said, I don't know if I got the Holy Ghost. Mm. 
then you need to go back and backtrack yourself mm -hmm. and find out that you actually die and repent and make mm -hmm. Jesus your savior but not your provider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can make him your, your, your savior, but can you make him Lord? I'm talking about lordship now. Is this Lord or where you go, where you dress, how you act, what, what you talk about, and what you put in your body? Is this Lord of that or his Lord partially? Mm -hmm. Lord means total supreme and total authority over everything. That means he has to be Lord. Now, the whole thing is to do that, you got to die to get there. Have anybody ever been in one of those services that folks just got saved? Yeah. Just got saved. Yeah. Raise your hand. I'm going to show y'all how it looked. They got saved. You know they were saved. Mm -hmm. now, I, now, I don't believe people get partial saved. I believe you're saved or you're not, amen. Amen. Somebody say, I'm partial saved. I ain't partial saved. I'm fully saved. Yeah. Now what? Watch this. Watch this. Because when I came to the church, I fully died. Uh -huh. You didn't hear me. Some of you die partially. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna die on this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna get it. Let me tell you something. You gotta give everything up, just give your life up, and you don't wanna do it no more. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta tell me what the drink, what the smoke. Right. Why are you gonna want it if you got God living in your temple? Come on. Somebody say, how much sin can you do when you get in trouble? Why do you want to say it anyway? Right. <laughs> how, much, how much can I do before I get in trouble? What's in you to ask you how much can you get away with? <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm a, I love steak. Ellen Jones, I love some steak. I love some steak. I love some steak. I'm trying to tell y'all something. <laughs> Trying to push that button. <laughs> now, if I go and I'm in the steak, and that steak jump up and say, Move! <laughs> <laughs> you ain't eat no more steak. I ain't eat no more steak. I'm probably gonna run, but let me tell you something. Watch this, watch this. A dead man and a dead woman can't talk. At all. You better say it. Ooh. At all. At all. When you dead and truly dead, you don't respond no more. Mm. When you're dead to your own self, you don't want the old stuff no more. Right. Come on now. Come on. When you're dead to yourself, I don't taste good no more. Mm. When you're dead to yourself, you got a new taste bud. You got a new talk. You got a new walk. And you got a new look. I want to help you out. Some of you never completely died. You died to a degree, but you still got your brain holes on. Mm. Mm. You still got the thing that associates you with everybody else because you ain't dead to that because you still want to be received from a dead world. But when I, oh my God, when I walked away from a dead world, I got introduced to a living heart. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, she ain't dead no more. Yeah, yeah. Because when I died at an altar, I got baptized. Yeah. And once I got baptized, I went into the holy place. Now I'm going to help y'all. Some people say, Pastor, I can't get in the holy place unless you got a whole bunch of people praying. Mm. <laughs> I can't get in the holy place at home by myself. Why? Mm. Mm. Talk to the preacher. Why can't you get there by yourself? Jesus ripped down the veil so you can get there. You got free access. I can get in the Holy Ghost by myself. But why do you need a crowd to get there? Come on now. Come on. Let me break it down to you. If you're struggling to get in God's presence now on earth, then how would you be prepared to see him in his full glory? Okay. 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 I never get in his presence. I never, I have to wait for Sunday in a prayer room. But I don't need somebody in a prayer room. I can give him my power and the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? 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 Jesus. How did the boat shut? Because I'm familiar with going into the holy place. Yeah. Yes. Come on. 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 Come on.
So you need somebody to say, let's come to the prayer room. But if they don't bring you to the prayer room, you can't go to your bedroom and get it. The same God that's in the prayer room is the same God in your bedroom. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right. I can't fill him in my bedroom because I do a lot of filth. In my bedroom. Oh. And there's a unholy environment in my bedroom. And I don't, oh my God, there's a whole lot of thoughts in my bedroom. So every time I begin to think of them, I start thinking about other stuff. Oh my God. So oh, your environment and your temperature will determine how you get into his presence. Mm. Mm. You've been in church 20 years, you ain't never been in presence of God. Wow. Only in church. What you doing? Come on, down, tell me. What y'all be doing? You doubt the way, but Sunday didn't do it, and that's why you ain't good. You know how to do it once a week and every now and then, but maybe every single day, every single. Oh my God! Let me get my breath. And that is why he's saying, "Depart from me, for I never knew you, because we never got intimate." In order to, well, you have to. In order to have something or birth or something, there must be intimacy. When have you been intimate with God? And how can you uh, Oh, oh, boy. Let's see. Here you go. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Jesus. Bringing us far together into a room is not intimacy. That's a group. Yeah. But God said, I tell you, that is my Lord and personal, 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 personal. personal. I'm going to talk about this. That's why some of your wife be looking excited and some of your husband look excited when you look at their spouse, they look dead. How can you be married to somebody? They're alive and you look dead. That one, oh, my oh, God, watch that. Oh, man. Just because they're in the present and no guarantee you in the present. They're going to look at you, they're going to look at you and say, what you be doing if y'all in the same house? Mm. Okay. Mm. Jesus. It's good over here. Yeah. Somebody say it's good over here. Good. Somebody yeah. say it's good over here. Good. I'm just trying to help you. You're helping, you're helping, you're helping. See, Mary, I need a group for me to fill them. Ooh. Somebody said the devil is alive. The devil is alive. Somebody said, I know how to pray by myself. I know how to pray by myself. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, I'll help you out. When I get back to my house sometime, I, I walk in the room and I say, Lord, I'm, I'm slipping off my flesh. I'm slipping off this filth. I'm slipping off this dirty. Forgive me for everything I've done that day. Lord, I just strip that stuff off. Then I take another step. And all of a sudden, I begin to praise it. I begin to worship it. I begin to feel it. He begins to touch me. Touch me here. Touch me now. I'm like, that's too much. And he'll stop. I said, do it again. And he'll do it all the way again. Because I know how to get into his holy. Steps. Broad is the gate. Watch this. And straight. The inner gate was 30 foot wide. But as you begin to walk into the holy place, it's 15 foot wide. It gets narrow as you begin to get to God. You have to take off some stuff. You have to strip yourself of some stuff. You got to take some things out of your mind to get into that place. That filth and that polluted and all that pornography in your mind can't get you there. Jesus. Jesus. Y'all can fake it all y'all want. Every time you fake it, you look stinky. Mm. Jesus. Y'all be faking like you got it. You look, be faking like you got anointed. Just be yourself and say, I don't got it, but I'm trying to get there. And some of y'all faking like you got it, and it looks so fake and phony. Everybody say you look crazy. Let me mess with you. And when you get there, come on. You can be there for hours. Mm. And you don't want to stop. Mm. You can be there two or three hours. And you say, This is good to me. Let me break something down to you. The reason 
Moses couldn't get in his presence because Moses going to see him face to face and he would have died. But have you ever been in the presence of God that your whole body began to quake? Amen. Your whole body began to shake. Your whole body began to quiver. Your whole body began to shake out of control. Let me tell you something. Well, Y'all can call them demon and possessed, but I'm going to tell you, demon and possessed ain't no different than Holy Ghost possessed. Possessed means someone takes total control of your whole body. But a person get their money possessed, they give different parts of their body to the devil or different areas in their life to the devil, but they still serving God, but they ain't yet made a demonstration of being demonic possessed. But it's been to say takes total control of their body and they have an outburst and being getting to shake and squeal and talk in different tongues on the floor. He finally got total control. But let me break something down to you. Some of you gave God part of yourself, but if you can get possessed in the Holy Ghost, that God can have all of you and nothing else black. You'll feel them in that type of way. Thanks. I'm trying to help you. It's gonna bother me. Because I be there, I go there, I live there. I was talking to a brother the other day. And uh, I told him, some of y'all visit a room with the Lord, but I live in that room. And some of you say the Lord room is right here. And every now and then, we'll catch you in that room. Every now, once, a, once every now and then, we'll catch you in that room, but you really don't live there. You really live here. But all of a sudden, you feel them sometimes. But I'm here to tell you, this is my residence. This is the room I live in. I don't live in no other room but this room. And this is the room you're going to find me every time. And we can't find you in the Holy Ghost room. Then what room are you in? Every now and then, you may visit, but you got to make the Holy Ghost a residence. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This is the temple. This is the, oh my God, this is the new vessel. And I'm filled to the brim. And my cup running over. Come on, clap your hands into your mouth. Father God, I thank you. Yes, Lord. I said I thank you. I, I wish I knew some people that get done to open their mouth, they know they got God, and they can just make this a sanctuary and begin to praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you.